Dirilus Erthugel, or Resurrection Erthugel, is a TV series I've been wanting to watch for a long time. I heard so much about it, from friends and people I know and online communities. It seems the main selling point of the series is that it's a show made by Muslims, for Muslims, about Islamic history, with stories and plot threads that teach people moral lessons and Islamic values. I know entire families who sit together and watch this show, and because it's so long, there's something like 100 episodes per season or something, it often takes people months or even years to finish, and as such, remains a nice family memory for many people who spent years watching this together. Erthugel itself does the rounds in my household also. My wife and I watched a few episodes together, but with our schedules and the children, it's difficult, and the beauty of Netflix means you can see it on separate screens whenever you want. We often compete with each other, racing to get ahead in the series, and discuss the plot a lot, the political backstabbings, the historical aspects, the meanings, and the messages. It really is a great show to watch with your family, because it is family friendly, in terms of nudity and all of that, but there's more than enough action and bloody violence to keep the kids interested. To be honest, when I was reading up on Erthugel, it sounded like my dream come true, because I have a huge interest in history, and in particular, Islamic history. Where I come from, not a lot of people have knowledge, or means to gain knowledge, or even have an interest for that matter in such things, even Muslims I know, and I'm sure the current political climate in the world has something to do with that. But once you dip your finger into the history of Islam, there's just an explosion of stunning periods of history that come flying at you. Amazing events like the early rise of Islam, the conquest of Arabia, the Ayyubid dynasty, the Umayyad dynasty, and there's so many fascinating characters such as Sultan Salahuddin al Ayyubi, who you may have seen in Ridley Scott's Kingdom of Heaven, Khalid bin Walid, the greatest Islamic military figure of all time who never lost a single battle in his life, and Sultan Muhammad al Fatih II, who conquered Constantinople at the age of 21. It's a wonderful subject. And it's a shame that what's happening in the world today is making non-Muslims aggressive and willfully ignorant towards Islamic history, and Muslims embarrassed and fearful of being proud about their history, lest they be grouped in with terrorist sympathisers. Anyway, my problem is that in spite of my keen interest, there just isn't really that much of Islamic history when it comes to movies or top-tier TV shows. If you know where to look, you come across movies like The Lion of the Desert and The Battle of Algiers, but there isn't really that much. That's where Toggle comes into play, as it's like my prayers have been answered and a full-scale TV show dedicated to a piece of history that I find interesting has been made. One subject I have a huge interest in is the Ottoman Empire, or Ottomani Empire, and depending on what you count as an empire, it could be considered the longest empire in human history. It was only dissolved recently, during the early 20th century, with the last proper leader being Sultan Abdul Hamid II. This was the last real Islamic caliphate, the government of the Islamic world, and through defeat at the hands of the likes of the British and the betrayal by Arab tribes whose descendants today control the likes of Saudi Arabia, the empire was taken over by Turkish nationalists and eventually dissolved. It's very interesting history, 600 years worth, and Ertugul isn't about the Ottoman Empire itself, but it does have links with it. The main character, Ertugul, is the father of Osman I, the man who founded the Ottoman Empire. There is a sequel series that follows his adventures, and from what I hear, there is an ambitious plan to continue and follow on with the entire history of the Ottoman Empire. I should point out that I haven't actually finished the first season of Ertugul. I usually never review a movie or TV show without finishing it, but as I heard each season was something like 100 episodes and each is about 40 minutes, I was going to review them 10 at a time. But I'm really confused now because when I looked at IMDb it said there's about 30 episodes per season. But then when I looked on Netflix it said that there's like 100. And I started my review anyway so I might as well finish. But I think I've worked it out now. Originally the show was around 30 episodes per season. But each episode was about 2 hours long and Netflix have cut them down to around 40 minutes each, hence why there's more episodes on Netflix. I'm around 10 episodes in now, but seeing as though that's often how long a lot of shows are, I think I know enough about this show to do a basic review. So Ertugel follows the adventures of, well, Ertugel, the father of Osman I, as he battles to protect his tribe from the Crusaders, the Mongol invaders, 
and the Byzantine Empire in the 13th century. He is one of four sons whose father is the Shah of their tribe, known as the Kaye tribe, and the man's name is Suleiman Shah. They are one of many Turk tribes that fled the Mongol invasion, holding on to their beliefs and customs rather than bow down to the invaders. In the first episode, Ertugel goes on a hunt and comes across a group of crusaders about to execute a trio of trader prisoners, a father and his son and daughter. Before the daughter is about to be ravaged, Ertugel steps into action and with his Alps, his warrior followers, takes out the crusaders and takes the prisoners as guests to his tribe. This is the springboard for all the stories that follow, as for example, Ertugel falls for the daughter, whose name is Halime, which causes friction in the camp because his parents had someone else in mind for this son, someone within their tribe that they wanted him to marry. That woman's sister is a venomous character who launches a smear campaign against the newly arrived Halime so that she becomes disgraced. She is also constantly pumping up her husband, putting corrupt thoughts into his head that creates jealousy and hatred of his brother in his heart. Also, the prisoners, it turns out, are not simple traders and are hiding their real identities. Whoever they are, they are important enough that a corrupt local leader who is in league secretly with the Crusaders wants the prisoners and threatens violence against Suleiman Shah, Ertugel's father, putting him in a difficult position where he must juggle the values that his custom places upon guests and the safety of his tribe. Meanwhile, an overall problem the tribe has is that there is a need for migration because their crops fail to grow and the animals are dying. In addition to this, there are other stories that manifest and grow through the actions of the characters. I remember thinking that it was all a little difficult to follow in the first episode. There's a lot of names thrown around. It is a bit of a challenge to keep up, but that's a problem that is eradicated by the time you get to, at the very latest, the third episode. By then, it's clear who is who and what the relations are between the vast amounts of different characters. In fact, it's one of the show's most impressive feats, being able to juggle so many different characters and give each ample amount of screen time for their individual issues to be explored. It's a very well-structured show in that sense, introducing new characters at just the right time when previous plot threads are coming to an end, and dedicating enough time to each person. It's actually quite funny in a way. A Togel can follow a group of men who are on a mission to save their tribe from destruction, and then minutes later follow a woman hoping her chores are done well that she won't get into trouble, or a dude herding sheep, with the same level of seriousness and sincerity. And it works. You buy into the characters and their predicaments, you get sucked into the world of Ertugel, and it is quite easy to become addicted and lost in the world building. It also has that kind of Game of Thrones or RuneScape feel going for it, that period atmosphere. Like with those kinds of worlds, you allow yourself to be swept away in the story, the characters and the entire world, until the episode finishes, and you return back to reality. It's escapism in its purest form. I did find the first one or two episodes a little clunky. Some of the acting was a little over the top. There seems to be a need from the show's editors to inject random moments of slow motion for no reason. The characters didn't seem too well developed, and everyone seems to call each other Bay. But it only takes around three episodes for the show to pull you in to such an extent you feel already familiar with the characters and the culture of the tribe of Kai like you've known them for ages. The show keeps you wanting to know what will happen next, and there's an equal amount of interest the show generates in all the major stuff, the macro predicaments, like the migration, the crusaders, the prisoners, and the minor stuff, like family quibbles, womanly feuds and such. The cinematography is great, and the music is really excellent. I did go in with some reservations, because I know by reputation that a lot of Turkish shows and movies sometimes aren't that good and they get pumped up by Turkish fans and of course the culture is a lot different to what I might be used to so I might just not get the show but I really like it I think it's great and I see myself seeing out the entire show and its sequel a lot of my reservations about possible overacting simple cartoonish bad guys and Turkish propaganda were put to bed as so far the cast do a swell job you can see things from everyone's point of view including the bad guys and though of course the protagonist is a Turk, I didn't get at all get a sense of Turkish propaganda. The show is adept at making you feel the emotions of the characters. It's actually quite remarkable now that I think about it. It seems to do it effortlessly. The camaraderie between the Alps, the feeling of doomed or forbidden love between Ertugul and Halime, the pain that Ertugul's brother feels and even the brother's wife, 
one of the characters I most despise. The show does well in presenting everyone as a real person, with goals and motivations, and as such it opens up ample room for discussion as to whether this character did the right thing, should this person have done this in this way, should they have gone down this route. The show is also drenched in Islamic values, and unlike a lot of movies and shows I've seen, it seems genuine and well researched. As the religion tells its followers and as characters in the show believe, those who are patient and steadfast in what is good and look to God for help find themselves rewarded in the end and those who are corrupt, no matter how powerful they are, find themselves as losers in the end. I like the diverseness of the characters also, like for example some of the Muslim rulers being good, others naive, some corrupt, some straight up bad. I feel like if a non-Muslim watched the show, they would see something they should already know anyway in that in the Muslim world everyone is an individual. The action of the individual doesn't reflect on the religion, and there have been good Muslim rulers and bad Muslim rulers. I like the values that the show champions. It makes a refreshing change from a lot of the pro-feminist, pro-enlightenment era of liberal movies and shows nowadays. Arthugal is very entertaining for all the political drama, the action, the interesting characters, but it also highlights the importance of commitment to family, helping those in need, the need for unity, compassion, kindness, the struggles that previous generations went through to ensure the survivals of Islam, amongst many other things. There's a sense of something mythical about the show. I'm sure most aren't expecting to see a documentary, but the show does have a kind of mythological edge about it, which it combines well with its historical elements. With regards to the historical aspects, I've had a lot of fun taking down names and looking them up online, getting lost in a rabbit hole with articles on real life characters in the show. I have heard that the subtitles are not entirely accurate on Netflix, which is a shame because these kind of Middle Eastern languages like Turkish, Arabic and Farsi are quite poetic, and even though a lot comes through, I sometimes feel there are things missing in translation, and I'm not getting the full gist of what's being said. Saying that though, the show is really strong in relevant departments. As stated, the acting, the music and all of that is on point, even the costumes are great. It does feel like a period setting, and you begin to recognise different organisations and tribes simply from the way they are dressed. The characters are usually intelligent and are not stupid for the sake of the plot. Rather, there is a healthy mix of strong and weak male and female characters. Overall, I think so far this show is pretty outstanding, both because of its showcasing of how Islam grew and spread and defended itself in the 13th century, and quite simply because it's a really entertaining swords and sandals medieval show. I think it's fantastic, and I look forward to continuing watching the show.